Hey guys, welcome to A Live. I am Noah Eichen, uh, creative director here at Eisenberg Group, and I'm joined by Matt Bretz, uh, creative director, and you oversee a lot of fun stuff we do here. Um, today we're talking about AR, uh, specifically augmented reality, um, and we're going to start by talking about the Microsoft HoloLens, which is a project that you work on uh, greatly. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think um, the one of the first things that occurs to me when you bring that up is that uh, they, you know, the HoloLens uh, has been trying to coin the term, and I wonder what you and I think of it actually, um, you know, mixed reality. Right. Yeah. Um, which is, but that's what happens, right? Like, I think one of the most fascinating things, I'm already off topic, but. <laughs> no, no, I agree. <laughs> one of the most fascinating things about this whole field is that, um, it's hard to find a word right. to cover VR. Like a lot of people are saying now VR, AR, and if they work with Microsoft MR, and that's so cumbersome, you know. But but uh, you know we do we have been uh, here at Eisenberg. We've been working on the Hololens stuff since before the technology was released to the world, and uh, before it looked like this, um, I started doing because there were so many. Um, people working on the development team that came from a games background, when they looked for somebody to tell the story of the device, they looked to their partners in games, which was Eisenberg. And so we just went up there, learned about the product, and so we've had a really long ramp to the program that you kind of raised your hand for, which is at one point we were going up there and uh, showing off different aspects of the HoloLens, and they said, hey, can you make a piece about this application called ActionGram? Right. And, uh, and then when we came back to the agency and talked about it, you know, you were in a content studio mm -hmm. um, and you said, hey, uh, that sounds like content to me, right? So like, tell me a little Let's bit about it. the yeah. Action Game program. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, the, the cool thing was, I mean, I, you guys were really deep into HoloLens making all these documentaries and my experience was a little limited. I got to experience it at E3 with the Halo experience two, two E3s ago, was that two? Yeah. Yeah, two ago. Um, and so, I was blown away by that experience where you got to basically step into the infinity and be on a hollow deck and see all that happening. And, and I, was, I was blown away how well it worked even in that earliest stage. Um, so when I heard about this opportunity to basically try out this action gram, and I saw, of course, the, the film you guys made about action gram with the team up there in Seattle. Um, and it seemed like a really fun opportunity to, to basically you know, make some short films with mixed reality holograms. Yeah, we should probably um, tell people what it is, too, yeah. which is like as one of the suite of applications that launches on the device, it is one that's kind of like the way that um, Snapchat allows you to, you know, dress up uh, a photo. Add stickers or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is like, as imagine that you could take holograms that are pre-recorded uh, and add them into videos of your friends. So it gives yeah. you kind of a... I would say the sensation is like, like gr grabbing a person out of the world, feeling, feeling that sensation of grabbing someone, moving them where you want, scaling them up and down, finding the, the right plane where they look like they're standing in front of you, and then having their action play out. And you just sort of witnessing that through this headset. I mean, for the most part, you look like a crazy person. Like, when, you know, when, when you're shooting when, it? Yeah, when you're shooting it. I was shooting some stuff out front and people were taking my picture constantly. Um, but you just sort of, you, you, yeah, because you have this on right You become now. fully ingrained in it, and it doesn't feel weird yeah. when you're interacting with them, you're walking around them because it's it's in your world there. I mean, as <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you look uh, pretty cool. Um, when we when I first, so I did the um, the training at the Microsoft Lounge, and they lent me a Holland, and I, I brought it back, and I just spent a couple days in the office over there with it on, screens up in the wall, like I would just put holograms or, or placings around the office, and it just became natural, right? Like yeah. it was an extension of, of yourself. I and mean, that's what's sort of different to me than, than VR. Like VR is a very immersive, you're in that world. It's really es escapism. This really, it just, it adds a layer on top of what you're already doing yeah. in a really nice way. I mean, I, I found myself replying to emails with it on. Yeah. And while I'm still like having... Well, that, yeah. that's actually one of the beauties of the yeah. device, right? Is that it's completely untethered. And now we sound like we're like a, we're a HoloLens it, yeah. shill outfit, but uh, we're not <laughs> really. We just have had a lot of opportunities to work with it. But it is true that it's basically, as far as I know, it's the one device on the market that's completely untethered. So you don't have to have it connected to a phone or connected to a PC. And you can be in the real world mixed with the things that you're adding as holograms so that you can 
be continuing to work mm -hmm. on your PC or talking to, you know, like as a director, actually directing those things, you, you jest about people taking pictures of you and thinking right. it looks really weird. But the nice thing is you can, you knew that. Yeah. Like if you were in a VR headset, you'd have no idea that people were taking pictures well, of you. Yeah. And <laughs> so again, not to, not to just jump on the HoloLens as yeah. like the, it's just happens to be the only device out there that we can do this on. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did find the one thing was really interesting. So just before I shot, started making the action stuff, I was doing some Oculus work with the Minecraft stuff. And that was really interesting as well, but a totally different experience. And as, when I first made the first, uh, sorry, when I made the first piece with Emmy, my daughter, um, which was called The Treat, mm -hmm. where it was actually her idea. You know, I showed her all the holograms, which was a hysterical moment also, like a six year old yeah. with this thing on her head that's like, you what know. was that thing that she said when you sent me that? Oh yeah. So the first, the first night we, I brought it home. I get the there's a bulldog with like antlers, uh, and uh, so I set it up for her, put it on her. She like blows her mind. She's like, I just want to hug it, but I can't because it's a hologram. <laughs> I know. Um, That's so awesome. But I showed her all the different holograms, and I, I wanted to make a film with her. I thought it'd be really fun. She's a really creative kid, and so she wanted to train the T Rex. And so the immediate like question was, okay, how are we going to do this? Um, and it was really my first experience trying to, you know, take that and have it interact with a person, which is, I mean, that, at a certain point it just becomes logistical, right? Yeah. And, and your sort of filmmaker brain takes over and you figure out how to set the shots up and, and cue that action versus your, your actor's action and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a really fun experience. And it was something I feel like, you know, intuitively I just picked up. You yeah. couldn't, like, I, I'm not a... I'm not a uh, designer that could do gra like heavy CG graphics or, or, or do something for, you know, for CG. But this was something, the, apps, the app was there, the, you know, all the holograms were built in for me, and I, I, the, the challenge was figuring out how to use them, yeah. which is a really fun creative challenge versus like, I don't have the technical skills to do that. Yeah, challenge. and as the library of things that they have in the app gets bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger, and they are like, they're licensing, you know, stuff. I don't know how much of that is, that we know that is, that we can talk about. Like, I don't talk yeah. about the. I mean, they just did the thing with Legendary, right? We all saw that. Yes, right. So Legendary Pictures yeah. has, let's just say, licensed some yeah. content that would appear in ActionGram, and as that library becomes bigger and bigger, and the number of, um, because it's also not just characters. Like they have weather effects, you know. Right. And I remember Karina, who's the community manager for uh, for ActionGram. Mm -hmm talking about how she was already a, a YouTube influencer and um, she's a big cosplay person and and was into making like, uh, she talked about making a Frozen tribute yeah, video. Did, yeah. And she had to make it, it took her days and days and days to find the right people to be in it and sew the costumes and add the s snow that she added and CG and stuff like that. Yeah. And she was saying like with ActionGram, as the menu gets bigger, she'll be able to make content like that in an afternoon just mm -hmm. by rounding up some people. Of course, then the next thing that they'll encounter is the challenges that you're referring to as a sure. filmmaker of just, your camera's not on a tripod, it's tripod, it's it's on your head, so you've got to stabilize it, you know? Yeah, I had, I had great ambitions at first where I was gonna build like GoPros into the eyeballs and then have a mannequin head that could see for me and then <laughs> tap that out so I could watch the video but it just quickly gave up because it was so complex. But, yeah. you know, I mean, for the most part, I, I tried a couple of different things to make the footage stabilize. And, you know, the cameras are gonna get better, the rig's gonna get better, and there's, there's other ways to make that work. Um, I think just as a creative tool, it's really exciting. I mean, what, when I first tried it, or after trying a couple of times, what, what I started thinking about was, oh, I can imagine in a couple of years when we wanna make a commercial with CG characters and real life actors, that you know, a, a VFX supervisor and a director and a you know a cameraman are have these on in a virtual set, and they're yeah you know they're they're placing actors and they're timing things out and they're mapping out shots, um, and everyone can visualize it because we can all see the you know the holographic world yeah. we're building, and to me that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Or even on a real set where you're gonna where you're gonna comp in CG CG characters later, pre visiting it through that and mapping yeah. your shots out could be really, really cool. Yeah, and these are like, you know, all applications that undoubtedly like, it's funny because like when I hear people in my field or elsewhere sort of talk about, um, you know, will will HoloLens succeed? Like will the technology stick, you know, uh, or, or Oculus Rift yeah. or uh, Gear VR or, or um, Vive, any of that stuff. I'm kind of like, that is a crazy question. Like mm -hmm. obviously, at some point, because we've been envisioning it since, like, you know, the Jetsons, we will live in a world 
that doesn't have screens where you know content can be placed into the environment around it, us and we can interact with it and um but it just you know i think it takes it it will take time mm-hmm. for all of these technologies to sort themselves out and figure out which brand or device or whatever is uh you know is rises to the fore and there'll be ones that we don't even envision now sure. right that that come forward and become uh the the successful iteration of it but i mean they're all right now the leading edge of basically that thing that we still don't have a name for like i mentioned at the very beginning right. which is what is it when you experience a world that is either enhanced compared to your world or a completely different world in mm-hmm. the case of virtual reality is there one word for what that like i mean it sees like immersive experiences yeah. is, is uh, immersive reality immersive like, reality it's already yeah. immersive though right yeah i mean our yes our regular reality is immersive <laughs> and, you know um, but yeah i agree like the there maybe it's not mixed maybe it's you know uh, augment i don't know but mixed feels like the closest to the experience? Yeah, I, th- I think the reason that they use at like, you know, the, the, that Microsoft said, let's call this mixed reality was to distinguish it from augmented reality. Like right. we were talking about earlier before the session about uh, the new Pokemon Go AR yeah, experience, yeah, yeah. right? So that is a mobile based. That's true augmented reality, like where you have a thing and you go and it sounds like geotag it. and take a, you can see it in your phone. Basically. You can see it, yeah. Like you, yeah. I look at the real world and something is added to it. Um, it's a little bit more plussed up than, say, Google Glass was because that was really more just like a, um, almost like a heads up uh, yeah. display experience, right? Where it's adding information to give you context tied to your real world. Whereas the Pokemon Go is actually adding three dimensional elements like the HoloLens to your world. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that you can't interact with them um, in the robust way that you can in applications in the HoloLens or right. in. For example, Magic Leap, I think, is intends to be on the same path. Yeah. That's really the one, when I think about all those technologies, one thing I think about right away, because I've had a chance, because we're blessed with having the opportunity to work with them all, is that the VR experiences are like apples to oranges from the AR experience. Totally. They're, yeah. just, they're not even competing technologies, I don't think. Um, they do different things. The, the, the mixed reality or AR experiences allow you to um, extend the tools of your world and continue to talk to the people that you work with while you're working with them. Whereas the VR experiences tend to be about disappearing into another world, right. which is particularly great for entertainment. Um, but the, uh, the only other direct competitor to this device that I know of yet is the, um, the Magic, Magic Leap, Leap yeah. which none of us know very much about, and we haven't had the chance to experience. We've just seen those videos, and I, you know, the, the which are very impressive. The there's the great Star Wars piece, yeah. Um, and there was the the one that was the the game. I can't remember which the, who the dev was for that. But you know, that is it's based on a game that Weta developed, right? Yeah, which correct. I don't, it's, it's like, like partners with Weta or something. Yeah. Um, but again, I think that we no one's seen that tech at all, and we know it's at least for now tethered. But I think there's probably, you know many many people developing yeah. now for this space that we we don't know about yet yeah the interesting thing to me and we're seeing it more and more is in vr especially like there's, there's these like game rooms popping up now where you go to like a warehouse and the vr is mapped to that warehouse yeah and you can actually walk around and, and not bump into things yeah like void yeah exactly right. which is i think a pretty cool way of going but i also think that could be a really fun way to do mixed reality as well where you have live spaces or build you know theme parks where you can then add mixed reality elements yeah. to that. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's really interesting about that from a game perspective, uh, if you start to think about it that way, which is mostly actually not the way that like, right. Microsoft has marketed the HoloLens, but I think since we, you know, with our background in games, one of the things that being in mixed reality does, if you can find the right game mechanics, is it also makes things instantly replayable because if it's connected, I mean, I, ideally, a mixed reality experience is somehow based on the real room in which you play it, the real space yeah. in which you play it. And so that means that every real new space that you play it in, the game is different, you know, which is, and they have a couple games like that, like mm-hmm. Fragments were in yep. the launch experiences and there was a a much reviled uh, version of Conquer, yep. Young Conquer. <laughs> Robo Raid's pretty fun. I got yeah, a, yeah. a tech demo, it's great. Yep. Um, so what are you looking forward to that doesn't even exist yet? Like what, what's one thing you want to see coming up out of mixed reality or something you're looking forward to. I mean, I should say also that Eisenberg's now looking at mixed reality from a development standpoint and the Microsoft sort of platform. 
Yeah. Um, we're going to be developing some, hopefully, some yeah. for that. That, um, I mean, I think uh, that we are wave one uh, dev kit. That's what that is, actually. This is the, you know, the wave one Microsoft HoloLens developer edition. And we've got a few of these. And we, one of the things that's really cool is because it's Unity based, the actual application content. If you're a company like ours that has people working in mobile app development, mm -hmm. it is such an intuitive and easy move to put some of them into HoloLens development. Right. Plus, it's all Windows uh, based. This is an actual Windows computer, like roughly twice the power of a Surface. Mm -hmm. And so developers can move right into it, and ours have. And, uh, you know, I guess the things I'm interested in seeing, I think we still haven't. It's such a new space, all of these issues we've been talking about today, mm -hmm. that we don't know yet what the newest, like what it will, like I mean I think of that game in, um, what was the the, um, I'm, uh, the movie with, um, in the future with the operating system that you fell in love with, Her, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That game, yeah, I yeah. want to play that game. The <laughs> game where like it's halfway in your house, in your room, and you're tempting the little creatures to run inside right. this and that. I mean, I'd love to do that, you know, but I also think there's like lots of applications on this thing that are going to change the way that doctors do medicine, the yeah. way that um, FBI extraction teams see the, you know, the place where the terrorists are before they mm -hmm. go in there, you know, like, so this will keep the terrorists from winning. That's what I'm, that's what, how, how I see mixed reality. I think that's a great way to end this. <laughs> <laughs> so terrorists, you better watch out. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank and, you. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, stay tuned. There's going to be more AR and VR and all sorts of news on A-List. Um, stay tuned to the Facebook page. Uh, I think we're going to send links out to some of the Actiogram shorts we made and yep. check the Eisenberg website for all of Matt's beautiful documentaries about HoloLens. Uh, and until next time, this has been live. Don't let the terrorists win.